Can the Canon RF 2470 lens be used for astrophotography? In this episode, we're going to find out. Now, I'm driving about nine hours to get to the darkest skies in Arizona, which means we're going to one of the most remotest places in Arizona. So remote, we needed a permit to get there and a permit to spend the night. So let's get some dirt under our tires and get out to our photography site. Okay, it's true, I do have an air down tool, but this is much faster. We're heading across northern Arizona, seeking the darkest skies possible. This is a map of the world's light pollution. Most people in developed nations can no longer view a dark sky. Growing up in Indiana, I would look up at the galaxy every night and I never knew it was there. This is Phoenix where I live now. There's no way to see the Milky Way from here. However, if you're willing to make the drive north, you will find a place that is free of light pollution. This location is the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We are heading to the Two Weep area. To visit here, you need to get a permit in advance. We have antelope, this is awesome. The road is long, dusty, out of cell phone service, and absolutely beautiful. This road is passable with the family car, but use extreme caution. If you get a flat, it's going to be a while before anybody drives by. The deeper into the wilderness we go, the more dramatic the landscape becomes, and the more I want to camp out here to do landscape photography. This area is managed by the Bureau of Land Management, so camping is permitted. With our arrival at the Grand Canyon, filming has to stop. Unfortunately, video filming for content creators is no longer allowed in any national park without an expensive permit. About three miles from the edge of the canyon, you'll find a parking lot for the non four wheel drive high clearance vehicles. There is no way your hybrid crossover SUV is going to make it past this point. We stopped at the Toro Weep Overlook. This wasn't a good time of day for photos. However, this was the first time my heart has ever pounded like this while standing on the edge of a cliff 3,000 feet above the Colorado River. We set up camp at campsite number 7. The large rock overhang would provide us some shade in the morning from the brutal summer sun. It was also my turn to do dishes on this trip. Afterwards, we set up and relaxed as the skies turned to darkness. Sunset was at 7.49 local time. Here you can see in these clear skies, the galaxy is visible to the naked eye, even before the skies completely darken. This was taken about 30 minutes after sunset. And now to test our lens. Here are the test photos. ISO 3200, 6400, 6400 and ISO 12800. I'm going to open each photo in Adobe Photoshop's Camera Raw Editor and do my basic editing. I'll be increasing the brightness, highlights, whites, and blacks, and then do some denoise on each image. Here are the process photos for ISO 3200, 6400, and 12800. I would say the Canon RF 2470 works really well for astrophotography. Now this was just the basic edit. Let's see what happens when I really work on these photos. I practice some artistic freedom in the colorization of these images. Can you believe this is floating over your head from spring to fall? Here's another one that's processed closer to true color. This is a vertical panorama. I'm taking into consideration clients for magazines and online content that require a portrait orientation for phones and tablets. And then there's this. 
the most complex photo that I have ever created. Three months of planning to find a moonless night that I can make this trip and get a camping permit. Many nights practicing capturing dark sky photos and hours polishing my skills in Lightroom, Photoshop, and Deep Sky Stacker. Nine hours of driving. 30 minutes to capture. Three and a half hours to process and create. Tune in next week while we'll walk you through the entire process that I created to bring all 150 photos together into this image. Please take a moment to subscribe and leave a comment about your thoughts on these photos.